morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today you get an education. You get an education in why you should become a teacher. You get an education in music. You get educated. And tomorrow you get re-educated if you don't get educated enough today because Angela Barker, who is a special needs teacher, mm -hmm up in the Copper Basin, and her sweet husband, Scott, will be with us, and we will be talking about the Barker Brothers event this weekend. So you're about to get educated. Get you a cup of coffee, get your paper and pencil, and sit down and get ready for some great music, some fun, some original music. Today's program is all about original music except one song, and that one song is a song that Dwight Sanford tells us all the time. He does one song that was a Merle Haggard song, and he said, I've done this song a million times and made a dollar, and Merle did it once and made a million dollars. So that's kind of the way it goes. If you're a local artist and you're a local struggling artist and you haven't become a gazillionaire yet, there's a reason. Somebody didn't push you out there in front of folks. And so today we're going to be pushing somebody out there in front of folks who's an amazing writer, an amazing, he's a, an amazing picker, and he loves to sing. And you're going to get to meet Dr. Dr. Wheeler. I love this. You have so many degrees, but your true love is music or your true love is teaching? It, it's, it's both. both. I, I, I th I think I came, I was into music nine months before I was born because mm -hmm. my parents just loved music. And, uh, but all my life, I, I wanted to teach. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, a, it's a music probably first, but I can't tell you which one I love the most. And what do you teach? Well, I have a doctor's degree in math education from middle school, mm -hmm. but I teach sixth grade geography presently. Wow. And I absolutely love it. That is so cool. Now, are kids involved, and do they like geography? That was kind of my favorite subject. Math and geography were my two favorites. Uh, you must have a good geography teacher. I had a great one, Coach Chadwick. He was amazing. Yeah. 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 I think it's I think it's how you deliver it. Uh, in my class every day, I I try to create an environment where students feel empowered. Mm -hmm. And so from the first day, I have these worthy statements on my wall. It says, today you're worthy of an education. Mm -hmm. Today you're worthy of love. Mm -hmm. Today you're worthy of forgiveness. That's awesome. And today you're worthy of a future which makes you worthy of serving others. And we have I tell each one by name that every day. And I find that if they believe in, that you believe in them, it doesn't matter whether it's math or social studies or tiddlywinks, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll buy in. That is awesome. That is so cool. Well, we came about you because Greg told mm -hmm. us about you, and it was kind of weird, and so we just kind of connected. And, and I realized that we kind of love the same thing. We love country living. We love creeks. I love that you did a video standing out in a creek. <laughs> That's kind of my favorite thing. And, and as a realtor, I often pull in the middle of the creek at Antioch Church Road with clients, and I open my car door, and I'll step out in the creek, and they're going, what are you doing? And I said, I am standing in the creek. Do you know how good it feels to stand mm. in the creek? It just feels good. Yeah. It just feels good. So today we're going to be featuring your music. We're going to be featuring we're going to be featuring all original music except that one song, and it is one song truly that Merle Haggard did make billions of dollars on, and Dwight made a dollar on it. But but there's something about love, like you said, before you were even born, your mother was listening to music, playing music. That was a part of you. Yes. You brought a guitar today that's a 1965 what? That's a Gibson Country and Western. It's the only good decision I made in college. Okay. Uh-oh, he's going to tell it all. His students need to hear this. They need to hear that, yeah, you weren't always perfect. Now, do you each year kind of zone in on one kid who maybe isn't doing so great and you help deliver them to a place of feeling greatness? Mm, that, you know, that's a great question. I, my history is always reaching out to the busted and broken. I've mm -hmm. taught in the alternative school mm -hmm. in our county for a number of years. Uh, but my radar is always on, and to reach the lost, the lonely, the busted, the broken, the, the outcast. Uh, I wrote a life mission statement a number of years ago. It says, my job is to strengthen, support, and sustain those around me to be the best them that they can be. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I told you, truly, in my life, a teacher molded me. 
and, and she told me all these things that I still today stand by, mm. you know. And I really love that Maisel Kemp was in my life. Yeah. And, and I just, I chose to have her three times a day. It was like I had mm. a home ec psychology and then home ec too, because I just loved the influence she mm. had on me. Do you have students who come back to you now and say, hey, you made a difference in my life? That, that's humbling. Yeah. Uh, yes, every year, and I've been teaching for 24 years, and every year, uh, that'll happen mm -hmm. and some student will come by and I'll get a note or a student will say you don't remember me but in such and such grade I was going through this and you reached out mm -hmm. or you said something so mm -hmm. I do not take it lightly the words because like you said earlier today a teacher can make you or break you. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of power in our words and uh, the truth is I don't think it's that important that kids know that the Ural Mountains separate Europe and Asia. No. They can figure that out later. What they need mm -hmm. to know is that they're loved and valued and that they matter and that they may not learn like everyone else. I had some learning struggles as a child. Mm -hmm. They may learn differently, but that doesn't determine their worth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I know people who took the GED three times and failed it because they quit school in 10th grade <clears throat> having a hard time with economics at home and they had to go to work to help their family basically to put food on the table and then said hey I really want to go to college but I've got to get my GED I was in a class with three women who took the three the GED three times mm. and one out of three finally passed it but the other two didn't give up and I think that's something we all learn if you if you flunked out of school, if you quit school, if you got pregnant and had to quit school, mm -hmm. whatever reason you didn't finish your education, your education is never finished until you say, I'm done, mm, right? That's, that's a good word. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Now you have a doctorate. Are you going any further than this? Well, my wife says no. Uh, <laughs> oh, I <laughs> after I finished this, I thought, I think I'm going to go get another doctor. She said, no, you've done all you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, 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 I love that. I love that. Now, what does your wife do? Uh, she teaches school also. Uh, okay. Uh, she teaches, she'll be teaching fourth grade this year. Mm -hmm. Fourth grade was Mrs. Jordan who taught me to write. And everybody always talks about my handwriting and how beautiful it is. My fourth grade teacher taught me to write. She would write on the board and I would copy her mm -hmm. because she had beautiful handwriting. So there are going to be kids that your wife will certainly make a lifelong impression on. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. My daughter also teaches school. And I love that. So, yeah. yeah. My, yeah. Son, my son's a musician and plays out in Portland and my daughter teaches school. And oh children. no, he said Portland. Oh, such Is a, that boy a liberal? Oh, you know, it's a beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, it's a beautiful place. It, it really is, is I yeah. Think. I love it. It is. Yeah. It is. We, we used to truck and go out there and pick up Christmas trees. Mm, so absolutely wow. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Now, we're going to share a song that you wrote that has been declared the official song of Cherokee County. Tell mm. me a little bit about it. Well, uh, this is a fascinating story. I, right before COVID, Rebecca Johnson of the Cherokee County Historical Society right? called yes. me and said, we have our capital campaign kickoff. Would you play music at it? Which I've done fundraiser things and you sit in the corner mm -hmm. and play songs mm -hmm. as background. And I said, sure, I'll be glad to. And then I also have taught Georgia history for a number of years, so mm -hmm. I love our historical society. And she said, by the way, right before she got up the phone, could you write a song about Cherokee County? Yeah, in my spare time, I'll just write a song. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll knock that out, and uh, I hung up the phone, and it occurred to me in that moment that I had agreed to write about 11,000 years of history in three minutes. Yeah, yeah, and so, you did it. <laughs> so panic stuck in. Now, in the South, where I, the way we were brought up around here is if you got in a little bit of trouble, you lied to your parents. Yeah. If you got in a whole lot of trouble, that's the first person you called. Yeah. So I called my mother. Uh-huh. And uh, she's a beautiful, precious woman. And my dad grew, uh, I, when we grew up, he could show us all the Indian mounds and mm -hmm. signs up and down the river. So I knew every foot of back road, every mile of railroad track, and those stories on his side. My mom comes from deep generations on the Canton side. There's a building in downtown Canton. The Tippins building was mm -hmm. her great granddaddy. Lee mm -hmm. Street, which was her granddad, mm -hmm. my granddaddy. She was brought up on Main Street. Her family worked in the mill. So I went, and my mom and I sat down, and we wrote this song. Wow. Together. Wow. And I started playing it out, and I played it. That debuted it at the Cherokee County Historical Society, and mm -hmm. someone said, that ought to be our county song. Mm -hmm. I didn't think anything about it. Started mm -hmm. playing it at shows. People began to ask for it, sing along with it. Next thing I know, 
uh, they declare it to be the official song of Cherokee County, and I'm very That's humbled. so cool. That is so cool. Now, <clears throat> when you wrote it and you relived it, are there special times in your life that you're like, wow, I'd love to go back there? I love that you did the 17 song, because at 17, didn't we all feel like we were six feet tall and bulletproof? Mm. You know, that was yeah. the time in our life. Is there a special time when you go back through that song that's really, really something to you? I, it's it's a good, <laughs> fantastic question, and it's my answer may be kind of unique because I come from about eight generations in this area. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, I get to go back and touch the ancient mm -hmm. in that song. Mm -hmm. I started out in 1831, right? And even Gilmer County, Lumpkin, all that was part of Cherokee County in 1831, right? Yeah. And so I get to touch the hymns of the garments of those that's gone before me. I feel like each time I sing that song from Canton being named after Canton, China because of the mm. mulberry trees and uh, Sherman burning it down and and just all those, the cotton mill, the marble courthouse. I, I feel like I get to touch not just my past, but my forefathers past each time I sing that song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's awesome. Do you have a number in your mind? How many times do you think you have actually performed that song? I have no idea. And, and can you imagine, I mean, just the honor, because generation after generation after generation, they're going to remember and they're going to want to hear that. And, mm -hmm. and I can remember when I first came to the area, I was 17, and the cotton mill was still active, <clears throat> and there was still dust blowing out those vents. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, remember, I mean, that was the coolest thing to me, and I was like, but we didn't think about the people inside there breathing that cotton dust. Right. We didn't think about the... You know, the, the building was probably full of asbestos. We didn't think about anything mm -hmm. that dangered us because it was a way of life. Right. It's where you went to get your paycheck to sustain your family. Mm -hmm. That's what it was about. Nobody questioned anything in today's world. We question everything. Mm -hmm. I think I liked the innocent area where we didn't question. We yeah. just accepted. I liked that better. And, you know, y'all can scream at me if you want to. I just kind of liked, my mama used to fuss at me because I'd get on my hands and knees and scrub my floor. It was asbestos. And I'd get down there with a Brillo mm. pad and scrub my floor. I didn't think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I guess we should have, but we were just happy to have stuff, happy to do that, happy mm -hmm. to have a job. The cotton mill produced how many thousands, millions of tons of fabric and cotton for this world. Well, people don't realize that at one time that Canton cotton mill was the number one producer of denim in the United States. Imagine that. If you're wearing an old, trendy, tr traditional Levi's, you know how much a pair of old, trendy, traditional Levi's will bring on eBay? Like $1,000 if you've got some of those old, old, old Levi's. Wow. That's the coolest stuff. They've lasted forever. Wow. Wow, well, it's interesting. They used to have that denim parade in downtown Canton to celebrate that, and I was glad to see that last year they're trying to renew that, you know, because they've it rebuilt the It should be mill. renewed, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It should be renewed. How many people do you know who are still alive who actually worked or had family who worked at the cotton mm. mill? Can you say a handful? Well, I th well, my aunt, well, of course, my great-grandparents worked there. My, my great-aunt Melba worked there for 50 years. Uh, wow, and retired, 50 years. Retired, I think she got $35 a month and a fake gold watch. Oh my uh, gosh. But I don't know anybody left that personally worked in the mill. Uh, my mom's 85, and uh, her parents, you know, had worked in the mill. She could have worked in the mill, but she worked at Lockheed. So. Mm, she had one of them high-flying jobs. <laughs> now, my mother worked at Bell Aircraft. Well, okay, so, Bell's bomber plant over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so my papa did worked. too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Remember, do you have the, uh, we still have a bell bomb. I wish I did. I wish I did. I'm it's sure a piggy that, bank bomb. Yeah, I wish I did. But, but when we look at the history of the jobs, I know somebody today in Pickens County who still gets up every morning and goes to Lockheed. When you think about that career, how fortunate. But they had to drive a long way to go there. They and there was had to no get up at like 3.30 in the morning to yes. go to work. Yeah. And there was no 575. You're right. It was down old five, old five. Mm -hmm. And then they come home, like my papa. I remember him come home. He had a mule called Henrietta. And he'd come home. He'd leave at 430 to go work. And he'd come home. And then he'd get that old mule and get out there. And he'd start plowing, working the garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that it, it was like he worked. But then he worked harder at home. 
that was a way of life, mm -hmm. you know. And, and today, people work. Oh, women are going to get angry with me. I loved doing clothes in a ringer washing machine. Do you remember one of those? I remember them, but uh, Blue Monday, so it's... Well, <laughs> I loved, I loved a ringer washing machine. I loved running that stuff through the ringer. Are you kidding? If you told me I had to do that today, I'd scream. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what we did, you know. And we were fortunate because I know people, well, Dwight's mom and his grandma used to take the, the wash into the creek and do it in a big wash pot. Yeah. So I was fortunate. We had a ringer washing machine, you know. So in the generations that we represent, because I'm like the sixth generation that I can remember of what the women did. If your mom's 85, she's probably the fifth generation of women, and she remembers what the sixth generation did, mm -hmm. and maybe even the seventh generation. They had a hard life. They had a hard life. And in Cherokee County, do you remember when pictures of when ball ground wasn't even paved? Yes. Wasn't paved. <laughs> it wasn't paved. It was a dirt street in downtown Ballground. I've seen pictures. Yeah, yes. it's crazy. It's crazy. And if your mom's 85, she probably remembers stuff like that. Well, if she does, and my dad's 86, and so we're from that Latham Town Free Home High Tower area mm -hmm. on the Wheeler Wilkie side, mm -hmm. and then on the Tippins Gaten side, the Canton area. So, yeah. Um, growing up in Latham Town and on Arbor Hill Road, and it was dirt, and then it mm -hmm. was, yeah. And now it's a high flying community. Yeah. It's big dollars, y'all. It's big dollars on Arbor Hill. If you want a house, it's big dollars. You got to have a big budget to write this song and to be accredited with being the guy who brought the song to life. Was the Historical Society kind of surprised that you could pull this off? Well, it was really interesting, Sherry, because. Uh, I played it at that event, mm -hmm. and there were literally tears. Yeah. Because uh, in the uh, the last line, I talk. I, I built the song around being born, raised, living, and dying mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. And the last line is, is when my days here have ended, mm -hmm. and my time has passed. Wow. Bury me beside my fathers in that Cherokee land that is blessed. Yeah. Well, when I got to that line, I kind of choked up. I oh, still wow. do. They got choked up. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's a YouTube of me doing it the first time somewhere out there I've seen. It. But, yeah, it was powerful. Well, we're going to power play it for you now. And you're going to get to hear. Now, the name of it is? Cherokee County. Cherokee County. And, you know, Cherokee County, there is also a Cherokee County, Alabama. There's a Cherokee County, North Carolina, and this song could actually be adjusted to serve those purposes too, because both of those were mill factory towns. Wow. So you could you could revise it a little bit, and you could have you could have all three states. He could be he could have a monopoly on all three states. So sit back now and enjoy a little bit of original music, and I think you're gonna like this one, guys. 1831. Cherokee County was formed There was gold in them foothills And the miners then stormed I was born in Cherokee County Where that Cherokee by the banks that muddy water and at a river still flow and I love to see the mountain and the mile is below across the creeks and the hilltops it's the land County, learning from my kin folks back from the Cherokee to the mulberry trees, how Sherman burned it back. And I love to see the mountain with the valleys below across the creek. 
When my days here have ended And my time has passed Bury me beside my fathers In that Cherokee land that is blessed And I'll soar over the mountain With the sacred mounds below Above the creeks and the hilltops To my newfound home And I'll soar on my tongue With the sacred mounds below Across the creeks And they'll talk This land is my home And we'll soar over those mountains With the sacred mounds below Above the creeks And they'll talk This land is my home And we'll soar With the sacred mounds below Above the creeks and the hilltops To our newfound home Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, 
and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. and folks and I bet you you liked it. Now we're going to share some more of your music. If I nail you down and say okay tell me your very favorite song. What's your very favorite song? Wow that it, I think it catches me on what every day you would ask me that. This is the favorite song of that I like as far as a love song or something I wrote. Something that touches people. What's something that really touches people? Well uh, I love gospel music. Um, it's it's hard to beat Amazing Grace. I end every show uh, with the old A.P. Carter song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken. Love that song. I Love that song. Every show with yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so those mean a lot to me. Um, my favorite love song of all time is Roberta Flack, The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Tell me a little history about you and your wife, and, and was there a moment like that in your life? So I played football at Cherokee High School. I graduated in 81. Mm -hmm. I was a senior. She was a freshman. And before the football games, we didn't get to go home on Friday. She was in the band. She mm -hmm. was a baton twirler, a majorette. Majorette, yeah. And I remember sitting on the benches while the band was warming up. And I looked at my buddies, and I said, that gal's going to be really pretty one day when she grows up. Uh -huh. That's the first time <laughs> I ever saw it. <laughs> and uh, she tells a story. The first time she remembered meeting, hearing me or seeing me is that I was also, not only was a football player and ball player, but I was also in the choir, mm -hmm. which was odd in that day. Mm -hmm. yes. And so Miss Walker, who was the greatest music teacher ever, who got me involved in singing, asked me, would I dress up as Kermit and the Frog? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and we had a gal dress up as Miss Piggy, and we went around to all the elementary schools and did a tour. Oh, my gosh. And went to her elementary school, and uh, she first time she saw me, I was dressed up as Kermit the Frog singing, Why Are There So Many Songs About Rainbows. Oh, my goodness. That is hysterical. How many years have y'all been married? Oh, Lord. This will be, uh, <laughs> well, 89, so what is this year? Is this... 23, so yeah. be 34 years this year. Wow, wow. Three of the best years of my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're in so much trouble now. <laughs> I hear her throwing a football at the TV. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's go to some other music that you've written now. Do you always just sit down and it just taps you on the shoulder? Dwight says that music just taps him on the shoulder and it writes itself. You know, Dwight's it got, yourself? sometimes, um, sometimes I, I Oddly enough, a number of these songs on this record, unlike Cherokee County, where I just sat down and just wrote it, was I dreamed. Mm -hmm. I'll have a dream about them. Or mm -hmm. uh, on the song On Our Way, uh, that song, uh, my brother said, Kurt, you, your songs are always about somebody who's dying, drug addicted, uh, coming out of re Can you not write one happy song? <laughs> yeah, I and, love it. And so uh, I wrote On Our Way for that. The, But I think... It's just like any artist. Sometimes there's, there's the muse who shows up, and I think sometimes that can be overrated because that makes it really mysterious, and that does happen. Uh, there's inspiration, but anybody can write a song. Anybody. There's no such thing as writer's block. Mm -hmm. Those are just ways people, oh, I can't write. No, what you mean to say is you can't write songs you like. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. every kid grows up, they're running around singing, mm -hmm. you know, I like to wear my bathing suit or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And... So I think anybody can write songs. It is hard to write songs that you like and people like. And so sometimes I sit down and write them. I have a, I have a phone full of ideas I call sniglets. Mm -hmm. I'll be in a restaurant, hear someone say something funny. I'll yep, write that down. Yep, yep. Or I'll wake up and I hear songs. And I'll get up in the middle of the night and go to the closet and hum them in. That is crazy. <laughs> that 
That is so crazy. Good. Well, we're going to share another one of your originals, and I don't know. We're going to let Trace pull out whatever he wants to pull out. We're going to let Trace be in charge. So, so just sit back and and Kurt, tell tell folks where they can see you live and where they can pick up your music. All right, you can go to KurtLeeWheelerMusic.com and. There are all things Kurt Wheeler. Instagram, it's L Town Poet. Uh, Facebook, it's Kurt Lee Wheeler Music with a K. But if you go to KurtLeeWheelerMusic.com, there's downloads of songs. You've got website information, concert information, all things Kurt Wheeler. And you can sign up for my email, and I won't bomb your email just to let you know some cool things coming yeah, up. Yeah, and you are going to be opening for Aaron Tippin. Uh, in Canton, right? Yes, yeah. the, uh, in July 22nd, it'll be Aaron Tippin, Sammy Crenshaw, and Colin Ray. I'm opening mm -hmm. up for those folks. Mm -hmm. And then at the Georgia Mountain Fair, August 23rd, I'm opening for Lee Greenwood mm -hmm. with my full band. Mm -hmm. And that is one that I know, I know somebody who's going to have tickets to that. Yeah. I know somebody who has tickets to that. So um, it, it is one of those things to take this local talent out of these mountains. We've seen it over and over and over. ETC was built on local talent in these mountains, from Barry Abernathy coming out of the woods mm. to Barry Scott coming out of the woods to all these guys, to uh, the Chansey family coming out of the woods. All these people sat around with their families all their lives and sang. Now, did your mom and dad do music with you? Yes, yes. So they they were so into music, and we were into dancing. We were cloggers. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, there used to be Larry if I'd have known that, part. he'd be out here clogging today. <laughs> if I'd have known that, I like clogging better than I like music. Are you kidding me? No, Lanier Land Country Music Oh, my part. gosh. <laughs> we just need you out there clogging. Well, it's going to be... <laughs> The Nearland Country Music Park, you remember, used to have all those country yes. acts coming. I was in, so Gene Croy, who was a, f a friend of Forrest Wade's, mm -hmm. uh, who was also into a lot of the Native American stuff, he had a clogging group, he and his daughter, uh, Barbara Croy, and they had the Dixie Dancers, which was I my remember. mom and dad. And I remember. I was the Dixie Dandies. Oh, my gosh. And so we went, and we would clog there, and just a quick, funny story. Uh, mom and dad eventually got asked to clog at the Grand Ole Opry. Mm-hmm. And we went up to the Grand Ole Opry, it's 1973, 74, when Nashville was still pretty seedy mm -hmm. and downtown. Mm -hmm. And we were backstage at the Ryman Auditorium, had met little Jimmy Dickens and Roy Acuff, and in walked the room was Johnny Cash. Oh, wow. It sucked wow. the air out of the room. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We, yeah. someone thought quick enough to um, get a camera. Now, mm -hmm. we couldn't afford the Polaroid one step. Yeah. We yeah. still had the kind yeah. of click. Yeah, but you got to get developed. And then you turn it. <laughs> well, <that's what> you <laughs> yeah. Take yeah. the picture. And so uh, Johnny was very friendly, walked over, and he put his right hand on my left shoulder. Oh, God. His left hand on my brother's right shoulder. And, you know, we had fresh bowl cuts just yeah, for the yeah, yeah, yeah. trip up there. And yeah. Someone took that picture. Bam. And so, you know, we'd come home, we sent it off, wait a week or two, and the film comes back and we're just tearing that up. <laughs> and oh, it, it, and there's the picture. And there's Johnny Cash and all his dark, beautiful glory and two little boys' foreheads. Oh, no. Just two foreheads, two bowl cuts, one black bowl cut, one brown. Oh, My no. brother and I, we still can't prove it to this day. There's just oh, Johnny no. Cash and two foreheads. Oh, no, that's so sad. <laughs> but what history? What history? Now, do you know who um, Donis Blackwell was? Because he mm -hmm. went to Nashville about the same period of time, and there was a clogging group there with him. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if it was your mom and daddy's clogging group. That is so wild. Mm -hmm. That is so crazy. It is so funny how we intertwine with different things, with the love of the same things. And it started kind of with me with the singing Jubilee. And mm -hmm. you said you used to listen to that. Jubilee. <laughs> There's just something about it. And we're all connected. You know, guys, we're all connected yeah. in some way, whether it be family or friends or or whatever, or even things that we just love. And I love somebody who can pick a guitar. Can you pick a guitar now and just play a little bit and lead us off to one of your songs that Trace has pulled out? Let's see. Can we do that? What, what, what song would I do? Uh, um, let's see. Oh. Here's a, one of the first songs I wrote. How much of it do you want me to play? Whatever you want to do. Um, this is one of the first songs I wrote. This was in the 80s, and uh, it's called Talking to Myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
sitting here thinking about you by myself Wondering what just went wrong And I can't believe what happened now I guess I wasn't that strong So I'm talking to myself again Wondering what just went wrong If I could turn back this clock again I know where we would not have been When you do things like this, does your mom just well up with this huge pride? My mother is, I mean, everybody says this about their mom, but she's, she's the biggest cheerleader. I love that. I love that. I love when you have that support system. Oh, yeah. Because that means it all. You know, you may never get to Nashville. You may never be on the stage at the Grand Ole Opry, but when you've got a support system, it is so very, very important. And I think that you taking that with you to the classroom also makes such a difference mm -hmm. in, in the lives of other people. Yeah. And that's what it's about. We're here to make a difference in the lives of other people. And, and I didn't thank y'all today. I, I usually take time to thank you. Oh, yesterday my nurse was smiling and she said, it's looking good. And I haven't shared pictures with everybody, but maybe 12 people have seen pretty much what I've been dealing with. But, <clears throat> but when I think about I've been dealing with it with you, and you have lifted me to a point to bring me through this. Um, we will see an oncologist, have a PET scan. Hopefully this junk has not spread. <clears throat> we don't want it to spread. We want it to go away. We want it to die a, a sudden death. But you have lifted me with your prayers, with your poetry, with different things you've sent me to read, with your support, and I can't say thank you enough. So. Um, Often we forget to say thank you, but I, I want to take the time every single day to thank each and every one of you who've made a difference. And uh, I know your churches are praying for me, and I know so many people from here to California to Timbuktu are praying, and that's what it takes. That's what it takes to get us through these hard times that we get that lick and we think, are you kidding me? How am I going to make it through this? Well, we know how we're going to make it through it. He's going to provide and he's going to help us, so don't forget that. We're going to go now to some of your original music, and um, this music came from a boy who was raised right there in Cherokee County, just down the road from where you might live, so sit back and listen. My mind and body is breaking down, too much inside time. And these bills keep piling up Growing line by line And this crap keeps building up I can't take no more When that clock strikes 5.30 I'm busting through that door And when that whistle blows Don't be standing in my way I've worked here 20 years I've earned my 14 days and I fumble for the key. I can't leave too soon, I don't owe the boss a dime. Vacation starts in June. Come on, my
wiggle our toes in the sand, the wait out in the creek, the make s'mores on a fire. Stroll along the beach as that moon hangs low. Just above the trees, or out on that horizon, like a ball on a string. And we never went back, and probably saved our life from the internet and Facebook, cell phone device, and we learned to love again. Talking face to face, yeah, we left that place for good and jumped out of that red race. We found our way to time and travel. The more stress of this world have unraveled. We took miles, we took beach rider, touch rider. We found our way. We took the miles. We're out of touch, we're out of reach. We found our way. Okay, I told you at the beginning of the day, my favorite one was the one in the creek. I love that. I love creeks. I love finding a pretty mountainside. I love that. Everybody needs to get out today and find a creek, take your shoes off, and go stand in the creek. It is better than any prescription any doctor can write you. It is absolutely so cool. Now, <clears throat> now we keep finding these common denominators we have from the Wilkies <laughs> to the Wades to you name it. It's crazy. It is so crazy how small this world is. Mm -hmm. And through music, you can bring the world even closer together. Mm -hmm. So we're at a, a time in our life, suicide is a problem. Mm -hmm. People are dying every day. Yeah. Soldiers coming home from the military can't deal with life today, they're dying. Kids who get made fun of at school mm -hmm. are dying. We see that every day. In school, do you see kids that need somebody to reach out and hold them and say, I love you? Are you seeing a little bit of depression in schools? I'm seeing a lot of it. I, I see I see it around me. I've struggled. I've mm -hmm. struggled with depression in my life. Uh, and the people around you can do all they can do, but in the end, it, it's up it, to you. It's up to me. It's up to you. I yeah. see kids who struggle. I see a lot of adults who struggle. It seems like more people and more and more. The good news in that is, is that it seems that people are more and more open about it. Mm -hmm. so I think that, that helps. Yeah, I think being able to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, I, I see that, and, and it it's it's a well, it's a plague. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a blight. Well, today we're going to end the program in a few minutes, in, in 15 minutes. We're going to end with a, a song. I showed you a little bit of the clip that Mike Rizuko, when Angela was battling cancer. Mike, being her friend from the time they were little bitty kids, wrote a song about her and sat here on the set and played it, original music. Um, it was amazing. And just a few years after that, he found himself in an issue with health problems and he ended his life. I never saw that coming. You know, sometimes we don't see it coming. Other times we think they're going to kill themselves. They're going to kill themselves. They're so down. They're so depressed. They're going to kill themselves. We have the ability to change somebody's life. We have the ability to be that light, that beautiful light. And often music, mm -hmm. a song, mm -hmm. can touch somebody's yeah. heart. And just that, you know, watching that creek, somebody who's thinking something negative, if you watch that creek and you see that beautiful couple walking away, then you see you throwing away the cell phone, it can change a life. You know, mm -hmm. it can change a life because you can say, well, I'll just get in my car and go to the creek and I'll just sit there and think about this before I do this. I think it makes such a difference. Music can change the world. Mm -hmm. and, and we see it every single day. There's this song. <clears throat> when we had the Iron Skillet restaurant, I had several songs on the uh, jukebox that I played every morning. And everybody analyzed me from those songs. And they'd say, we know what kind of mood you're in today. No, they didn't. <laughs> it was just I wanted to hear that song. And, and so Happiest Girl in the Whole USA mm. by Donna Fargo was how mm -hmm. I started my day. And I jacked that jukebox up as loud as I could. 
we need a little happiness in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, we need a little bit of that. So we're going to let Trace go to another one of your songs, and we're just letting Trace be the, the guiding light. We don't know what he's going to surprise us with, but I can tell y'all, I bet you 10 to 1 you're going to like it. So sit back <laughs> now and enjoy a little bit more of this amazing original music. Friday nights of football life Holding hands by bonfire light Asking you to wear my class ring Pep rallies and fresh mown grass Bus rides to games and talking trash Letter jackets and our first kiss And we're 17 forever in our mind Yelling, we got spirit on the sidelines. Waving pom poms in the air. You had my heart right there. Seventeen, forever in my mind. Ask your dad if I could take you out. Boy, what are you talking about? A lot of questions then said, yeah. My real big took my hand. We drove off in mom's minivan. A bit too far, a bit too fast. We're 17, forever in our mind. Yelling, look at the scoreboard and see who's behind. Women pop pops in the air. You had my heart right there. Seventeen forever in our Time shows, homecoming dates still wear a robe. Still a bit too far, a bit too fast. Cause we're 17 forever in our mind. Yelling, we got spirit on the sidelines. Waving pom poms in the air, you had my heart right there. 17. River in our mind. Time has come, years have gone, and we grew up and we moved on. And every fall I recall, and we're 17, forever in our mind. Yelling, look at the scoreboard and see who's behind. Waving pom poms in the air, you had my heart right there. Seventeen, forever in our mind. Yeah, we were seventeen, forever in our mind. Yeah, let look at the scoreboard and see who's behind. Waving pom poms in the air, you had my. I wish I was 17, 123 pounds in a 66 Chevelle. Dad, <laughs> gummy, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I like that yeah. song. I remember 17. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it all. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about what if a kid today can't decide what they want to do for a living? Would you suggest they be a teacher? Um, that's a great question. 
I would sit down and if if it's in your heart to teach. And it must be in your heart. Yeah, it, it must be in your heart. If you can do anything else, do it because you're not meant to teach. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I heard somebody say when Charles Stanley said this about preaching. He said if if you're if you feel like you're called to preach, try to do anything else you can. If you can't do anything else, and preach. Mm -hmm. So I, I think as t a teacher, I think it's a great calling. I do not believe everybody needs to go to college. I think that's overrated. I think we need a lot of people going to trade schools. I'm telling you, we need electricians. We yes, need that's plumbers. What we, need. we need framing people to frame these houses. Well, like, There's so many things. I had a, had a snake in my house yesterday on the toilet. In your house? In the house. Oh, right my there. gosh. So, what kind? It's a big old kink rat snake. But anyway, yes. funny as I walked in there, it goes to being a plumber. In I the my, house. Yeah, so I went to get a, I went to the restroom, I opened up the lid, and there he was. And so uh, I uh, went to get a glove to grab him and throw him out. And in the meantime, he went down the toilet. And so I called up my buddy Moochie. I said, he's a plumber. He said, I, I said, ain't nothing you can do about it. So I, I used to be a plumber's helper. So I drained all the water out, unset the toilet, took it out, and outside my brother-in-law, we got the snake out and put How it back in. How did the snake get in there? Pet door. Really? Just wow. coming through the pet door <clears throat> and <clears throat> wrapped its way <throat> up in there. And, oh my gosh. But going back to trade school, I, I didn't, I wasn't going to call a lawyer to come get that. No, no. I called no. the floor. That's right, that's <laughs> right. And, and, and every single day you walk around your house and you can think of 50, you need a cabinet maker, you need yeah. an electrician, you need somebody to refinish your floors. Get a trade. Yes. Get a trade in today's world Absolutely. because it's so important. But also, pick up a guitar. Yes. And if you have that talent, would you? You wouldn't take a million dollars for your no. writing career, your your performing no. career. You don't make a living doing it, but you make a life doing it. I make a life doing it, and yeah. I tell people all the time. Meet people all the time. They say, "Well, I wish I'd play guitar." I said, "Well, I met a guy a while back. He was 65." I said, "How old are you going to be in 10 years?" He said, "75." I said, "Will you be 75 and playing?" For 10 years or 65. And can't play. Okay, so I, he said, what I do? I said, get you a guitar, play six minutes a night. Really? He yeah. came back a year and a half later. He said, you don't remember me. He said, I went and do it, and I can play. Oh, that's awesome. Six minutes that's a night. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, will you do just a little instrumental for us and, and show us how easy it is? Tell me if you were going to teach somebody to play a guitar. What's the first thing you do? I would just tell them, first of all, get a guitar. It doesn't have to be a great guitar, and I would just teach them some, some chords. I wouldn't teach them theory. Mm -hmm. I usually teach kids like the opening of Sweet Home Alabama, so they know something. Mm -hmm. you know That's so awesome. So give them something they know right off the bat. The mm -hmm. worst, the best way to kill a kid is go, all right, let me talk to you about music theory. Oh, yeah, no, This no. is a D diminished seventh. That, nobody cares about that. No, no. You know, teach no. almost heaven. West Virginia. So just I just would teach them something right off the bat that they could recognize and know. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I hate that you're going to have to go back to teaching school because we'll have you on again twice this summer, and then we'll have to just on holidays when you're out of school you can come back again. I would love so there to. you go. So I'd see, if you kids will get your paper and pencil, you'll get lessons because we'll make you do this about <laughs> twice a month. And, and encourage kids and encourage people to, and it's like you said with the 65-year-old, you're not too old to learn. Right. You're not too old to learn. So if you've always wanted to pick up a mandolin, to me a mandolin is one of those really tough ones, mm -hmm. um, or even drums. You know, mm -hmm. the best thing about the Beach Boys concert was the drummer. He was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then they had like four or five guitars that were just amazing. They, mm -hmm. were, they carried the show. It mm -hmm. was awesome. And those guitar pickers were the ones that were like people going, oh, man, look at that. Look mm -hmm. at that. So it happens. Yeah, it's, it's it got happens. me through some good times and some dark times. And again, to get in touch with his music, Kurt Wheeler mm -hmm. music. And it is very simple. And you're going to be playing again in Canton. And then where else locally? Uh, I'll be up here at the pub in L.A.J. here in a, maybe this month or next month. I'll be up in this area. Um, so, Canton, Woodstock, Alpharetta, up to Hiawassee. This is kind of my little corridor. And you're going to be at Georgia Mountain Fair with Lee Greenwood. So, y'all remember yeah. that. Lee Greenwood, get your tickets now. Yes. Now, today we're going to leave you with an original song. It was written in honor of my daughter when she was battling cancer. And so, I kind of think today as I'm facing this deal I'm dealing with, I think I needed to hear it. 
So we're gonna we're gonna listen as Mike Rizuko does Angela's smile and remember um, we had no idea that Mike would also end his life with suicide. There's somebody out there today that you can touch, you can reach, and you can change their life. So please do that. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, for thank, you thank you, thank you, and here we go. Your name. 